Am I a candidate for hairline lowering follicular unit extraction? How much would it cost? As you can tell by the photos, I have a receding hairline. My expectations with surgery would be to have my hairline lowered to give me a more youthful look. I am 22 years old. If it means anything, my hair is straight being that I am West Indian. How much would this cost and is it possible? Thank you for your question. You're 22 years old and you've submitted photos and asking a question about whether or not you're a candidate for FUEs or follicular unit extraction transplant surgery. You explain that your hair is straight uh, related to your West Indian origin. So to answer a question like this, first the point of understanding whether or not you're a, tr a hair transplant candidate has to begin with the question about your, re your recession or receding of your hairline. So you've noticed at a very young age that your hairline is receding. So the question is, is where will that hairline be three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now? One of the, the um, questions that is always raised about surgery is how many grafts can you actually place? But what the more important question is, is how, many hair, how much hair do you have to graft? You see, when you are young and you have some receding, technically it's, it's not difficult to address that relatively small amount of recession with transplant. But you have to remember that the donor area, the area where you transplant from, is limited. Think of the baldest man you've ever seen and in, in, in the medical field we refer to that as Norwood 7, which is a very thin rim of hair. That rim of hair is we refer to as genetically resistant. That means that no matter how old they get, that hair will always be there. Hair transplant is the selective use of this genetically resistant area and transplanting it to other areas. So, which means that there is a limit to how much hair you have available to transplant. It's like having only so much money in the bank. You can't use it all up because you may need the money later. So, look at your family history. See what other male members of your family, whether it's father, uncles, cousins, etc., what is their hair loss pattern like? Within a family, it is not something, hair loss is not uh, determined by any specific uh, pattern such as dominant or recessive or the common myth of maternal uncle. It's not the case. It's variable. Even within siblings, it can be variable. One brother can have a lot of hair. Another brother can have thinning hair or hair loss at a relatively young age. So. Think about the future before you try to address the amount of recession you have now. Now, in thinking about other options besides transplant, in the United States there are two drugs that are approved for um, hair loss. One is minoxidil, which is a topical solution or foam, and the other is finasteride, which is an oral medication which blocks an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. 5-alpha reductase blocks the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. A specific subgroup of men with male pattern hair loss have what's called androgen sensitive hair follicles. Those androgen sensitive hair follicles will thin in response to circulating dihydrotestosterone or DHT. What, mean, what that means is that by taking finasteride you reduce DHT thereby restoring the functionality of the hair follicle. The problem is, there are two problems really. One is, a significant percentage of men do not respond to finasteride. Many men have come to us um, for hair transplant or hair loss solutions because they were taking finasteride and they lost hair in spite of it. A more, uh, more well-known issue right now is that there is question about the long-term sexual side effects of taking finasteride. This has led in our practice for a lot of men to come in who are in their 20s and 30s to seek an alternative. 
What we've developed in our practice is this alternative that we call hair regeneration. And what it is is a, the, the application of a material called extracellular matrix combined in a specific way with platelet-rich plasma. And what we've done is over the past several years with hundreds and hundreds of patients coming from all over the world, we've developed our own method, our formulation, and customization based on a large clinical data uh, pool of data. So what we do is actually a one-time injection that appears to last up to five years up to this point and um, has been a remarkable benefit for men who, are, who don't want to take Propecia or Finasteride or men who are taking it and are still losing hair. It also has proven to be beneficial for female pattern hair loss. So this means that when you, uh, when you are considering a solution for your receding hairline, think about the future, think about where your hairline is going and what can, be, what can happen when you're 25, 30 years old. Also think about medical options as opposed to a surgery and then consider some of these newer developing treatments like ours called hair regeneration, the use of extracellular matrix um, to help restore the functionality of the hair follicle. The problem is, is that, that hair research has not um, revealed the critical mechanisms of hair growth to the level that we understand everything about it. So we've been very fortunate that clinically we found a material that was already approved for wound healing that we've been able to now help a lot of patients who have male pattern and female pattern hair loss. So this is something else that you can explore as an option. And with that being said, I hope that was helpful and thank you for your question.